Agent Squad. Welcome back on Soda. Is it worth it? So today's episode, we have this cool one right here. And pretty much what this is, is a USB-C meter tester. If you can see for the one that we got right here from this brand, if you see the way how they designed it, it's actually very similar to the other one that we viewed in the past, which is right here. And it literally it is the same exact thing and same design. Only difference is the fact that for this one that I showed you last time, it supports up to 100 watts. That is what they mentioned. But for this one particular, it supports up to 240 watts if you guys want to test anything that supports up to that. And here is the packaging for the other one. You can see, it's literally the same exact thing. But when you guys turn to the back, when you guys look at the stat that's on here, it's a little bit different. When you guys look at the voltage that's on here, it's much lower compared to what you guys get in this one. So here is what the package looks like for both of them. Let me open this one to show you guys what the inside looks like. So once you guys open up, here's what the inside looks like. If you guys do take it out, once you guys do take it out, here's what the product looks like. And you see, once you do put both of them side by side, it's literally the same exact design and same product. So we do have the USB-C option right here on the side. We do have the button right here for you to press to change the display. And here we do have the USB-C option. So for this side right here is where you can plug into the USB-C outlet. Other side, you guys want to plug it onto your device when you guys plug in cable, etc. And obviously in the front is the display screen to show you guys the stats when you guys do use it. So both of them work the same way. And that is everything that's on the product. So for me personally, I don't have anything that is USB-C compatible that supports up to 240 watts. So I don't have anything in specific that I can actually test out that supports 240 watts. But for the other one right here, they mention how it supports up to 100 watts when you guys do use it. But when I actually test it out, it can go up to 140 watts when I test it out for my laptop to charge like my MacBook Pro 16 inch. So I'm not sure if they put the wrong information on the listing or something, but when I test out the old one, it does support 140 watts, which is why I wanted from a product to actually test out to see whether or not the cable and actual wall charger supports up to 140 watts to charge my MacBook Pro. So unless if you guys do have something that you guys want to test that supports up to 240 watts, the new one right here will be really helpful for you. But if you guys are looking for a tester that supports 140 watts, the old one right here that I just showed you guys in a previous video, this one will support it. And I didn't know that until I tested out for myself, so hopefully they do fix the information on the listing so that way people know and that way they don't have to buy the 240 if they don't need it. So just to show you guys a quick little test to prove to you guys that it will show you guys that support 140 for the new one and the old one. Let me actually test out really quick. Alright, so right here I do have my tester plugged in and we're using this Anchor Wall Charger to test it out. And the reason why I'm using this tester is to show you guys two different tests to show you guys whether the status on here is true or not. So I'll try the old one first. If you guys do plug it in. Once you guys do plug it in, you guys unplug in cable. And the cable that I'm using right here is Apple cable that supports 140 watts. So what I'm gonna do is plug this side onto my computer, which is MacBook Pro 16 inch. And the battery that's on here is completely dead. So once you do plug it in, if it's in here, that starts charging. And we gotta look at the stats that's on here. You can see how the number's going up a lot. Right now it's at 137. It went up to 145. So definitely probably has a lot of charge when you guys do use it. But when you guys look at the numbers on here, you can see how that's showing the voltage, the amp, and also the watts. So right now it's showing at 127 watts. Now it's 129. It keeps going up and down. But let me see if the number on here is slightly lower than what you guys see on this one. And see how this one is saying 134. So now I'm going to unplug it and try it on the other one for the new one to show you guys to show you guys how much that one gives you guys when you guys look at the stats. So let's do unplug it. Let's plug in the new one. And I'll unplug it in. Once you guys plug it in, if it's in here, it starts charging. If I look at the number that's on here, it definitely went up a lot. So right now that's 133 and it's slowly going up and down. But when you guys look at the number that's on here, it's showing 125. It's slowly going up and down. And the way how the button works on this one, it works the same as the other one. If you guys do press it, it changes the display to upside down, if you can see. So it literally works the same exact way. And when you guys look at the numbers that's on here, the same thing. It shows you guys the volt, the amp, and also the watts. And even when we use this one where it supports 240 watts, it shows you the same stats as well. Whereas right here, it shows you guys 132. So you don't really need to go for the 241 unless you guys have to charge something that's really powerful. Let me see when we do test it out, it gives you the same stat. Even though for this other one where they do tell you guys it supports up to 100 watts, if you see how when we do test out the other one here, it shows you guys the same exact thing, which is more than 100 watts. So that is everything that's on the button. Now to come boxing and test the button. Now to answer the question of whether or not it's worth or not. So like I mentioned, regardless of which one I do get, both of them are pretty worth it. It just depends on what you guys are trying to look for, whether if you guys want something very simple to test almost anything, or if you guys want something that supports up to 240 watts, then you probably want to go for the other one that I just showed you guys just now. But then obviously for those of you guys who don't want or don't need one or have one of these, obviously don't buy one and save your mind something else actually do need. 
So that's basically everything for this video itself. If you guys like this video, make sure to smash that like button in the bottom. That will definitely help this video out. And it will definitely help with the algorithm as well to promote more videos for you guys so you guys can see more of the videos or similar videos as well. But as always, make sure to stay positive, be you, and I'll see you guys in the next episode of Is It Worth It? Peace.